We all know China. We have to say that this country has two governments. One of the governments is on the mainland called the People's Republic of China. But there is another government on this island and it's called the Republic of China or Taiwan. The government that's on this island uses this flag, the flag that belonged to mainland China before the communists. But mainland went the communist route and the Taiwanese did not want to go communist. They kept the old flag and turned into a smaller country. In 1971, the UN accepted this country and they said the capital city is Taipei, not Beijing. And that means they're an independent nation. The voting that happened in the United Nations, most African countries voted against China. So they were for an independent Taiwan. This passes. We get to the year 2007, a time where they're trying to condemn the North Korean government for human rights. The biggest North Korean ally right now is China. And obviously they voted against it. Most countries around the world voted yes on condemning North Korea, but 43 African countries voted against it. So they voted with China. These were the same countries that voted for Taiwan's independence. But time changed their minds. And that's in a way where Europe doesn't have any influence here, and neither does America. And it's only China that truly has influence in this continent. You could say China bought this continent with money. Like for example, they spent three and a half billion dollars to run a train from Nairobi to Mombasa, Kenya. Something that the Kenyans dreamt of. Guinea had problems with electricity for years. The Chinese came over and they researched what's the problem. And with 500 million dollars, they built a dam and fixed all the electrical issues in this country something the Europeans couldn't do for more than a hundred years. Anywhere in Africa you find problems, you see the Chinese over there. And you could say they're kind of trying to take over and take control of this place. And that's with spending money. Like in Ethiopia's capital city, Addis Ababa, there was an absurd amount of traffic. China came over and built a metro system and solved the traffic issue by a little bit. You might say congratulations to China because they're helping the African people out. It seems like China actually loves Africa, but it's not like that. They're gonna get what they need. All this money comes from the Export Import Bank of China and the projects happen. You might ask why don't the Americans or European banks invest? They say investing in these countries has a very high risk. But Bank of China doesn't believe in risks. And they pretty much approve all the loans. What kind of a rate does the Chinese bank charge? It's good to know that the rates are extremely low actually. It's under 1% and a lot of times 0%. Let's be honest, what's China's goal with this? They're not making any money. They're gonna get their money back eventually. But why are they doing this? Experts say what China is doing is political, not economic. It's good to know in the last 40 years, China has had the fastest growing economy in history. And you could say it can't go any higher and it has hit its limit. And that means their GDP can't go any higher than what it is today. And that's why they were looking for a place to invest money. Invest money and make their GDP rise once again. They, they looked at Africa and they realized it's the most held back area in the entire world. They could help the countries advance and also they could use their natural resources like mine. There is a rule that says if you want to make money, you got to spend money. China is taking that route as well. You can't say they're doing anything evil here because the African people get something in return. We all know the Western countries were looking for cheap labor. They went to China and pretty much took all their factories over there. So China is at a place that they want to do the same thing with Africa. 
China has had the most poor people in history. If you've seen our video about the most evil dictator, you'll notice how people live when Mao was the leader of China. You could say millions of people died of starvation. But in the last 15 years, poverty has been killed in China. And this has caused the wages in the country to go way higher than it used to. So China is pretty much trying to replace Africa with itself. Right now, the cheapest labor you can find is in African countries. And China is spending a lot of money investing in different places of Africa to make money. But on the side, it has some favors from the governments of these countries. Like when you're voting in the UN, vote for China, not against China. That's absurd because there's 54 countries in this continent and each country has one vote and the votes are very important for a country like China. You might ask, why don't the other types of international banks give Africa loans? Not only do these banks have a higher rate, they have some favors as well. Like for example, they say, if you want a loan, you have to follow human right laws. You can't have child laborers. Don't work with slippers. Don't bring slaves. But Bank of China doesn't have any of these requests. It's also good to know that the first army base outside of China was in Djibouti, Africa. So the first Chinese army base outside of China was in Africa as well. In the year 2015, with only spending $12 billion in Africa, they were able to spread their influence all around the continent. And that's especially the vote in the United Nations. This is not an insane number, but Africa is so poor that money like this helps them out a lot. Right now, all over Africa, there's 10,000 different Chinese companies working. And that means small and huge factories went to Africa and they're using the cheap labor they can find all over this place. This is not bad for the African people as well. After all these years, they're seeing some process in their economy and industry. So we notice that China was the world's factory and they got very rich off of it. So now it's Africa's turn to do the same. You could say in a few years, Africa is gonna be a huge economy in the world, but you can't say it's gonna be fast as China because China is communist and they don't joke around. If you don't do your job correctly, you will be executed. When it's during COVID and they say don't come outside, that means you don't come outside. If someone comes out, there will be consequences. But, but Africa can't be this totalitarian. You guys know what totalitarian is. It basically means you control the people with fear. 